Are you feeling good out there? <laughs> we are at Create Talks and I am just so excited about interviewing Robert Burrow. Last week you heard all, the, all about fashion through Brienne. If you didn't get a chance, make sure you look at that. But we're at Create Talks here, Teresa Deadman, and just so excited about interviewing Robert Burrow, who yeah. is one of my interns this year. Yeah. And I feel like you need to hear his story. You need to feel, figure out if you have a heart for music or a heart to be creative in any kind of sphere, he has so many testimonies about excellence, but also even testimonies about healing that he wants to share with you. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background, like yeah. you and music. Those two words seem to just be linked together. When did this start? Yeah, so I'm so happy to be here. Thank, thanks for inviting me. You're so welcome. So yeah, my, my story with music started um, a long time ago. Um, none of my parents are musicians, but they felt that they wanted to um, to have me try some instruments when I was really, really small. Oh, come on. Um, when I was a kid. So back home in Sweden, that's that's where I'm from, all y'all. Sweden, nor Northern Europe. So my mom had me try the Ooh, piano when I was it's six. It's colder, yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> getting chilly, but that's good. Uh, so yeah, when I was six, I had tried the piano, and uh, yeah, she just um, wanted me to try a lot of different things, so yeah, I just started uh, playing that a lot, and then I started playing a lot of other instruments as well. I've just always had like this passion to make everything fun, like if, it's not, on. if it's not fun, it's not, it's not really worth putting time into, because then you don't get motivated, then you don't feel like it's coming from a place of just flowing. So fun is one of my wow. core values, and that just helped me try, try so many instruments. But but I remember when I was like around eight, I I just felt this pressure to um, to perform. So I I actually quit for one year playing, but then then I found my way back to to joy and just bring it like bring happiness into it again. And um, I'm 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 really happy that that my mom really coached me through that. Now, now, how many instruments do you actually play, Robert? Yeah, so at this at this point, I actually do play around 10 instruments. Come, come, come on. From all the years of, of trying. Yeah, trying he different. will be imparting to you. Again, Create Talks Live, 1225, we're here. If you have any questions, too, just jot them down uh, and make sure that you let us know because we'd like to answer any questions that you might have, too. So yeah. you play 10 instruments, but yeah. besides all that, Somehow you got into gospel choir. Yeah. Explain that. Yeah, so that's kind of my one of my main passions right now with gospel music. I got introduced to that after I quit high school, uh, after I ended high school and started to figure out what do I want to do in life. So then I went to this really awesome uh, vocational school, like a music vocational school back home mm. in Sweden for three years uh, with a gospel music program. I just fell in love with it instantly because uh, I think that gospel music brings brings so much joy in it and it really makes me come alive um, when, I, when I hear gospel music and just go oh give thanks unto the, the Lord, Lord for he is good. good come on everybody yes he, he is good. good come on join us music. oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good yes he is good for he is worthy worthy for he is good yeah, he, he is, is good, good, for he, he is worthy, worthy, for he, he is good. good. Yes, yeah, he, he is good. good. Woo! Thanks, Tati, for joining me on that. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing how music just makes you happy. Yeah, totally. I mean, I remember in 1 Samuel 16. Yeah. And here is David, and he has played with the sheep. We don't even know how many years yeah. he played there. And we know that Saul had a demon because of all of his wrong choices that he had in comparison. Yeah. And it doesn't say how, but they knew that somehow when David played, something was different. Yeah. And so they asked him to come. And when he played, the demon left Saul. Yeah. Now, we know in Scripture that Scripture is an, an indication of something that we can take. Yeah. And so now you were in Santa Cruz with me just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And we were on a ministry trip together. And... And we were just talking about the power of creativity to heal and share what happened when you when you sang over someone. Yeah, so this is one of the like really cool things about activating your creative gift. So this is something I've been exploring more and more the last years. And Teresa's really helped me to step out in this and just 
flow because because I believe since God is our creator, He wants us to be creative as well. Come on, and He's given all of us creative calling, creative passions. So if anybody says you're not creative, that that's actually not true. Woo! Everybody and then you creative. can't sing. That's not true. That's also not exactly. Everybody <laughs> has a creative uh, gift inside of you. You just need to explore that. And I believe that when we step out and yeah. do something with our creativity, um, like prophetic acts, totally. just doing something, God really blesses us that and can bring healing and transformation in people's lives through that. Yeah. And that's what we saw happening there in, totally. um, in Santa Cruz and also in right there in, in Samuel when he anoints David in front of, his, in, in front of David's brothers. Yeah. So God says to Samuel that God wants to anoint David. And then Samuel does the does the action he takes the the bottle of oil and actually does you know with the movement with his hand he anoints david and i believe that that's what we do when we uh right. take our creative gift and use that so in santa cruz this this woman that i has been working as a massage therapist for a lot of years she had hurt her thumb i guess that's a pretty uh, common thing that happens yeah because it's overuse yeah, yeah overuse definitely so uh, she didn't have a lot of movement in her, I believe it was her right thumb. Yeah, she could not, she had to just, she, could, she couldn't move it like this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the other one she could move just like, you know, just fine. But this one, it, she, she was like stuck over here. So then I stepped out and sang over her. And that's, you know, that's always a risk. And I, I believe that God rewards and we take risk, health, healthy risk. Yeah, and wasn't it funny because somebody had also drawn a picture for her yeah. and called her up. So she got this picture, and then it was for healing, and then she notices the thumb, yeah. and she shares with us that she can't move it. But then yeah. you break into the song. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just sang something. Like when, when I went up there, I didn't know what to sing. I just closed my eyes, asked Papa God, so what do you want for your daughter here? Come and of on. course he wants healing, right? Yeah. So I just started singing words of healing. And I believe when we sing, it just bypasses a lot of intellectual um, barriers. Totally. Because people receive a song so deep instantly. Yeah. So they can just take those words and just, you know, claim them. Yeah. And I believe that, that that's what happened when I started singing over her. So then she, like, started crying a little bit. And she said, my thumb is coming back. And she started moving it more and more. That's crazy. And that's just the goodness of God right there. Yeah. And... Later in a workshop that we had for dance, somebody else danced over her, and then her thumb even got almost complete mobility back. And that's, uh, guys, listen to this. This is just through somebody creating yeah. in the presence of God and then releasing it. This is what we all carry. I mean, if you know of anyone who's sick, who, who here knows of anyone who's, I think we all yeah, do, definitely, right? Definitely. It's like, why not just sing? Hey, I'd like to just sing a song for you. And you just sing and then say, how are you feeling? And just test it out. I had... One person I know, a good friend, who was went to the hospital because this person was going to die. They had basically given, mm. he was on life support, mm. he was a drug addict, was not a Christian. And his, it was just his, like, his friend that said, could you please come and pray? So she didn't know what to do, so she came mm. in the room and she started to sing, God is so good. Come on. And That's she sang great. it for five minutes. Mm. And then she started to hear him saying, God is so good. Come on. He was in a coma. And then so he wakes up, and he, and he finds out what's going on. They pray for him again. He sits up. All the swelling leaves his body. Yes. He ends up Come leaving on. the hospital in five, five days, hmm. ends up going into our ministry school, and graduated just second year, um, a year ago. And that's the power of Jesus. Like, hey, guys, he was going to die. He had no hope. Yeah. But somebody released that, and look what happened. Yeah. I mean, and so you beginning to sing when you were younger, yeah. it wasn't just for your enjoyment even, but it was because God wanted to use you yeah. to heal people. Yeah. I this is totally huge. Believe so. yeah. um, I totally so. I know that, that one of our, our passions in what you're doing and, and what you're going after is, is this powerful move of God and how music can transform culture. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, like, why do you think music is such a vital weapon against the enemy we know like what happened in acts when paul and silas were in prison and they were going to die and they were ready to like just you know just basically take their life yeah. but they started to sing psalms and hymns and then the prison doors swang open I know, right? so why why has this been something that people i mean people we sing for worship yeah but there's other ways that music is so vital so why is it so important in our culture 
I think music is one of the things in culture that really has an impact and shifts culture like really really quickly and also very like it goes straight to the to the heart as I was talking about before like it, it bypasses a lot of intellectual intellectual uh, barriers that people might have yeah so that's that makes music this powerful weapon because people yeah. sometimes don't even think and reflect over what they sing but they actually they actually take the message to their heart so for example wow. for example this uh, this is one a funny example that I have uh, a couple of years ago and when, uh, when I just woke up in the morning my my brother would run in from his room to my room and just play uh, a funny song on on his iPhone when, when I was waking up and that song was, was the first thing that I heard that morning and it just stuck in, in my head the whole day I couldn't get it out of my head Come on. and that just like that I believe that was God just telling me and just reminding me of the power of music and the power that it has to a person because you know the lyrics stuck in my head as well and I believe that this is what happens when people listen to the radio that they just you know they accept the messages if they sing the songs and I believe that's why David had that psalms printed out in in the music and in lyrics so that people could sing them and remember them because wow. a song you remember a song so um so oh, yeah. well compared oh, yeah. to just uh, a message so oh, I, gosh, I really believe that we need to transform culture through music uh because it's such a powerful weapon so my passion is to write songs and uh, hopefully they will you know go on the radios to just impart hope to people yeah and uh, to tell them that they're valuable. That's amazing. Which is something people need to hear because it's the truth, right? So yeah. the truth will set you free. And I'm, I'm super passionate about truth as well. To combine truth and, um, <clears throat> and faith, to, so, so to say um, um, uh, science, science and faith, that's one of my, my two passion areas in life that I want to combine and show that to the world through music. Because if the world gets that, that Jesus is real, actually like there's truth behind it all then they will also be so much more interested in all the positive things that we want to bring like the identity and that they're worthy and that they have a hope and a future with him that's what actually got me saved when i was 15 that i i understood that it's oh it's true now i want to believe in it and give my life to this and i also accepted my identity as his son and i believe that everyone wants that everyone wants to know that yeah. they're loved and that they have purpose and value. So true. I, I have just quickly. I think Robert, it's so important for everyone watching to hear this. It's like, do you realize, like, when a child is in the womb, if you sing or if you play instruments, that it actually is something that they can remember. Uh, they they know that sounds are important in even them feeling loved. I mean, throughout history, we have so many examples of how people would sing psalms and sing, sing different types of things like this and how it would be embedded in your, in your head. Yeah. I mean, all of us know that. Like Sometimes we can't quote scripture, but if the scripture is equated with the song, all of us, oh, give thanks. We know it, yeah, right? Know it. So song, actually, it imprints. And the other thing that it does is it, it changes your mood. I mean, so many times people are going through depression, they're going yeah. through fears, or they're going through lies. And the music can come and it can transform culture in yeah. such an incredible way. And we're brokers of that. That's who we are. Mm. Uh, and, and I love music because music is something that every single person alive does. Yeah. They listen to. We listen to it all the time. So why can't we be the ones who, who actually bring that? Yeah. Now, why is choir, why is that so important to you? What is the... I mean, because you're, I mean, you're going to be involved this whole year. Yeah. So what Robert is doing is he's leading a choir with youth because he really wants to touch the youth. And it's, it's such a strong way of bringing life to them, yeah. but also giving them purpose. But why is that important to you? And what do you think it does to, yeah. to a youth? So when I was younger and I didn't really know, like I didn't have a personal experience with choir yet. It, it wasn't that attractive to me. But when I got, um, when I, when I uh, finished high school and I got into this gospel music program, I actually went to it only because I could play bass there and yeah. develop my bass skills. And I thought that, oh, good thing, I don't have to be in the choir. Yeah. But then I just fell in love with choir music. The first time I heard it, Come it just on. blew me away. I was just sitting there and just getting goosebumps all over. And I really believe that that is because of unity and the power of being a family 
when you sing together. There's something, there's something on. on this that people moving together, singing the same thing, just moving together in power. Man, that touched me so much. And, it, and if you add excellence to that as well, then the world will see it and actually want it. And that's, uh, that's what I want to do with uh, the, the Reading Youth this year, or like the Bethel Youth, that I want them to be empowered, to believe in themselves, and to feel, to feel the love and power of, of being in, in, a, in a choir family, and to just be able to express themselves, find their voice, and be able to just... Because when I, when I sing in, in a choir, I just get so pumped up. I get fired up. <laughs> I want to preach preach the gospel to the world like seriously when i walk away from a choir rehearsal uh i i feel so good about life i and i understand I, I, i'm more social i want to talk to people out on the streets and tell them that they are awesome just because i've been activated so that's like if if you feel that you want to be activated try try out choirs especially gospel choirs if you can be able to sing and dance and just <clears throat> get your body moving you'll fall in love with it for sure so we have some of your friends watching. It's Simon and Jonathan and Yannick. So welcome. We're so glad you're here with us. If you have any yeah. questions for Robert, let us know. We, we, have, we have something that's super important right now is we also want to activate. And I'm going to have Robert just play the harmonica. And he's going to go after a word of knowledge. Now, he's going to share about that. Now, again... The great thing about Jesus is Jesus not he's not bound by time. Am I right? So good. So if you have any friends that have problems or have issues that are similar to this, take it and ask God to heal you because God wants to heal you. So when you hear it, God's going to heal you. So um, go ahead and uh, and share. What what word of knowledge do you want to go after? Um, do you want me to get someone specific watching right now? Yeah, I mean, is there anything in the, in the body that you think needs to get healed right now? Um, I was feeling before I came here, like lower lower back pain uh, for somebody that's watching. I don't know if that's anybody of you out there, but like when you walk, or like stand for a long time, you get lower back pain. Okay, so if you have lower back pain, just like, just t type it in, let us know. And if you have any friends, quickly call them and tell them to get on because they're going to get healed, all right? So we're going after this. Oh, we do we do have some people that are watching that yeah. that need it. So Perfect. I'm going to have you you if you can sing, you can play, you can do whatever yeah. you want. So yeah. let's do it. Perfect. All right. I'll start with just playing uh playing a a tune real quick on my harmonica. So if you feel like this word is for you, just like just receive, just relax and just enjoy this and have God minister to you right now. Yeah. And then I'll also sing a little bit prophetically. shoulder uh, a left shoulder being healed as well and people that have problems with their throat I think you've had a cold or something I saw like a liquid mentholatum gone down so I feel like God's gonna heal some people of some throat problems as well and also the left ear any pain in the left ear all right let me just also sing something real quick um, so this is something that you you guys all can do you can just step out in faith and just take a risk and sing over someone. It might feel like pretty funny at first if you haven't done it. But hearing the testimonies and seeing the testimonies from this is super fun. And having people be able to raise their arms higher than they could before because they've got healed from shoulder pain. That, that makes it so worth it oh, to yeah. step out and do a try. So just, um, just receive this. So we have somebody with pain right now. So that's Yannick. Mm -hmm. So great, and, and Howard and, and Jeanette. So we just released that to you. So as yeah. you hear this song, and again, if there's more different issues in your body than what we just said, take it, because we mm. want to see you get healed. Yeah. Okay, go for yeah. it. The Father is right here. He sees you through. 
The Father is right here, my child for you. And He doesn't want you to have any pain. He created you for His purpose and it will remain in you because you were called for great things and we declare that your body be healed in Jesus name now what we want you to do is just check out your body try and do something you couldn't do if if there's no pain please like let us know on our Facebook page we, we want to celebrate with you we want to celebrate with the whole the whole entire viewer audience we want to know what God was doing during this yeah. time and continue just to believe and continue to walk in faith and and continue to activate like what yeah. exactly what what was said and Robert really wants to impart to you just yeah. an anointing I mean if you could have one dream to transform through music this this world what would it be Robert yeah. Well, I have a lot of dreams, but one of my dreams is to really see a generation get hold of truth again and not just not just go for what they feel like that they want to do all the time because we have such a fast-paced world with all the fast food and everything is only for your pleasure. But if people get hold of yeah. Okay, this is truth. Wow, that's the most heavy thing we have. And that will set you free and if you run with that, you'll feel so much better about yourself and be able to function to your, the full potential that God has put in your life. That is something that I really want people to get a hold That's of. Amazing. And their identity has got daughters and sons. Wow. Yeah. So if I can do that through music, I'll be super happy when I die and go to heaven. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people will be super happy. I, I really want you just to pray for people now yeah. and just for in part. Yeah. Uh, if you right now are in this place where you really haven't believed that you could be creative or... If you believe that there's something inside of you that, gosh, I've always wanted to sing, but I never thought it could. Yeah. Or I never thought it was relevant. Yeah. Um, we want you to take a leap of faith and just this week begin to operate and be creative in that world. And when you hear a song, to know maybe that song is for someone else as well. We just want to see God move in your direction. So, yeah. Robert, go ahead and impart. Absolutely. And I have a short testimony about that as well. When I was leading youth choir once, um, I was leading a group of 15-year-olds, and uh, a lot of them had never sung in choir before, especially the guys were not super happy about having to take <laughs> choir for one no, hour a day for this youth camp. No. They said, no, do we have to be in this? And I said, give it three times, and then you can drop out if you don't like it. But I just made it fun for those guys, and I had them do push-ups for like the warm-up <laughs> and stuff, and had them like run around the chairs, and then we sang. And they came up to me, and thank me. They were so thankful and said, Hey, Robert, I never thought that I could sing. I never believed in myself that I had a voice. Wow. But after this, I've discovered a new realm and I can express myself in creativity and in, in choir, which I thought was only for geeks. But <laughs> they, they discovered that that was something for them. Yeah, it's come on. It fun because it's all about having fun and just being able to express yourself. Totally. So I just want to release that to everybody to find whatever God has put in your heart for creativity. It doesn't have to be music at all. It can be, we have fashion, we have photography, there's drama, there's anything that you can create. Yeah, anything. Yeah. Anything and everything. Yeah. So we just, we just call on your presence right now, Heavenly Father, and I just declare that everyone who's watching this right now will just feel your touch and feel your presence as you activate them in their creative calling, Lord. Just thank you for putting creativity in everybody's heart. So, so I, I just pray, uh, I just pray, Lord, that, that it will be playful to discover creativity. And we just say, we just say healings to everybody that's been watching. And we also, we also declare that, that you guys will be able to just step out in faith and try singing over someone, try writing a painting for someone, and just see that person light up and be happy, get healed or get touched by the presence of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for uh, joining Robert Burrell. Yeah, thank you and so much his, for having um, me here. Yeah, and his amazing, amazing journey of, of what's going on. This has been a huge, a huge support, hasn't it? Just seeing what God's doing and, and how we can work and what He can do. Uh, for, and for people out there that really want to grow in their craft, yeah. consistency, what is the number one thing you would tell them as we close? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something huge because if you're like me, you're a procrastinator. 
You also have no so much way. stuff going on. You have so much stuff going Nobody on. Can Nobody that, can right? identify with that, right? <laughs> I guess a lot of people struggle <laughs> with this because we have so much going on in this fast-paced world that we live in. For me, if I don't set myself up with the right people, mm. so like if I like collaboration is a huge thing for me. That was also one of the things that really made me love being a part of a choir and just being able to be activated because you have yeah. so many people that support you, and uh, and you have to show up on time because otherwise you will let others down. So if you only isolate yourself and do your own thing, it might work for some people. For me, it doesn't work super well. So be able to find your people, that is key. Super key. And also have put, people that you can be accountable to. Yeah, definitely. Super important. Definitely. And also like, like for example, post on Facebook that, hey, I will have a concert with my own songs in, 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 in like two months from now. And then you know that, okay, I better start writing That's some songs right. now. Because otherwise I will let those people down that they can't hear any songs so, for the So concert. you give yourself deadlines. Yeah. Definitely. Give yourself deadlines. And then have fun is part of it yeah, too as well. Yeah, having fun is so important. So thank you. thanks again for joining. And we just want to say that it's been an honor. Next week we have somebody who actually has her own jewelry line. She was involved mm. here in our school of ministry. And she was a nurse. And she became so successful that she was able to lay that down. And mm. now she has her own business called Crown Jewels. And so she's going to be talking about that and imparting to that, showing you about prophetic jewelry and what you can do there as well. Yeah. So, uh, Robert, thanks again for joining, yeah. and we'll see you next week. Yeah.